And hello friends, this is Miami CO Indiana with another how-to video today. Again on water softener. First of all, I want to say if you're having trouble with your water softener, not softening correctly, the most likely event is a salt bridge or a salt jam in your water softener. I did a video on that right before this one, so you'll want to take a look at that. This is a maintenance video for your water softener to get the iron out of your water softener. And I'll kind of explain that. Your water softener, I'm not going to give you all the details on how they work, but there are great videos on YouTube if you'd like to know that. But basically, the salt that you see there, when your system recharges, recharges in the bottom of the water softener and makes a salt brine. There are resin beads in the brine tank at the bottom that get coated with the salt particles and then it does an ion exchange it's called. As the water comes across the sodium particle will release and the minerals that you don't want will collect on the resin beads thus giving you the soft water. So that's it in a nutshell. What happens though after a period of time your resin beads become coated with iron. Iron is something that coats the resin beads more than any other mineral. And that's why today we're going to use Iron Out, the product I use, to get the iron off of the resin beads so they can work more efficiently. Now, before you do this, I'm going to first tell you what you're going to need and then tell you a few steps that are very important to take. So make sure you watch this entire video with all the very important steps that you need to take to do this correctly and safely. So here's the product we're going to need is iron out. There are other products, but you can see rust stain remover. You can see the second item there, water softener, is one of the applications. There are other products on the market too. If you use another product, just, just make sure you follow the label directions exactly like they tell you to. So I'm going to show you on Iron Out. This is a product I've been using for years, but there are, are other products on the market as well. You can get this, by the way, in hardware stores, big box stores, and also online, Amazon and eBay both have this product as well, and it's not real expensive. Uh, this container, oh, it looks like it says a pound 12 ounces. I believe it was only like six dollars so it's not real expensive and we're not going to use it all this will give me several applications so we want to get the iron off the resin beads how often you have to do this is how much iron you have in your water if you have like brown rust stains under your faucets like in your bathtub shower your sinks your toilet has a brown ring around it that means you have a lot of iron content if you don't see much of that, you probably do not have a high iron content, but all water has some iron in it. Normally speaking, well water has more iron than municipally treated water. But you're going to have iron in all applications in different levels. I find that I don't have a huge iron content, but I do have some, like we all do. So I do this about every six months as a maintenance. The first thing I'm going to tell you that is very important while you're doing this, which is going to take about an hour and a half, you do not want to use any water in the house. So you want to do this when there's no one else in the house or everyone's asleep in their beds when there's not going to be any water usage at all. No showers, no washing dishes, no doing laundry, no flushing toilets. We don't want to use any water during this application. So that's number one. Besides our iron out, the other things we're going to need today is a vessel to mix our product. We're going to need a measuring cup to measure our product. And we're going to need the recommended water. The directions on the package say for a water softener application to use one cup, which this is a one cup measuring cup, of the product to one half gallon of water. So you want to make sure to measure a half a gallon of water. This is also very important. Make sure your water is cold. It doesn't have to be refrigerated water, but cold tap water. 
The reason we're not going to use hot water, that creates steam, which means some of the chemical product can lift up in that steam, and we don't want that. So make sure your water is just regular cold tap water out of your tap. The other thing I recommend you use is a mask while you're mixing the application. This is a powder. Some of the chemical can become airborne, and this is just an added protection. So I'm wearing a mask now under my chin. When I get to mixing the product, I will pull my mask up. Just want to show you that. And the last thing, you're going to need something to stir the product. I have that. Whoops, about dropped the camera there. Sorry about that. I'm just using a paint stick that I'm going to use to stir the product up. So let's get started on stirring it up and getting our product ready. I will show you where we're going to put the product. It is in the brine tank. Where is the brine tank? On this style of water softener, like most of you probably have, the brine tank is right under this. So that's where your brine tank is. That's where the beads are on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. It may take a little twisting motion, but we'll just remove that off. And now we have access to the brine tank. We'll put the lid on when we're finished. So let's go ahead and get our product mixed. Get my bucket out. I always like to put the water in first and then the chemical in second. So I'm going to go ahead and pour my half gallon of water in as the direction state. And then I'm going to measure out one cup of the iron out. Now, if you don't have a measuring cup dedicated to using chemicals and stuff, you see that you some residue on the side. I only use this for applications like this. You don't want to use a measuring cup from your kitchen, put chemicals in it, and then go use it in your kitchen again. This is dedicated for jobs like this. If you don't have that, just get you an old coffee cup like this. But I'm going to show you here that that'll fit right inside there. There's space down here, which means that's going to be more than one cup of product. If you're using an old coffee cup, a standard coffee cup, about three-fourths full is going to give you about one cup. And we don't have to be exact. We just need to be close. Okay, so let me pull my mask up. Okay, my mask is pulled up. We're going to measure out one cup of this product. As you can see, some of the you can see some of the powder coming up. And that's why we're wearing a mask here. Okay, a little bit more there. Okay, we have one cup of product. We have our mask on to protect ourselves, kind of get that going in that direction. We're going to pour it in. Our water. Oh, now we see why we wear a mask, right? You can see that quite clearly there. We have got powder going up, but we have our mask on so we're safe. Now we're just going to stir this up. And since it's cold water, it's going to take a little while to stir that. You also don't want to get this on your skin either, so kind of be careful here. All right. We are stirred up. Put my stick away. Now we're simply going to pour that in our brine tank that we got the lid off. That'll be our next step here. Doing this one-handed, probably not going to be the easiest thing, but we're going to try our best here. And there she goes in. Of course, you're going to do this two-handed. You're not going to have spills like that. I don't think I did too bad. If some of it gets on the salt, don't worry about it. It doesn't hurt anything. So we have our chemical in. And now is one of the most important steps I'm going to tell you. First of all, let me kind of get my mask adjusted here. It's kind of hard to talk through a mask. So if it's muffled, I apologize. We're going to put the lid back on our brine tank. So we'll take our lid, put it back on. 
Okay, the lid is back on. This is a very important step here. We want to now start the water softener on a recharge cycle. Why are we doing that? Because we want to make sure the chemicals we just put in are completely washed out. This is very important. You're going to see on your unit the recharge. It's going to say on off. If I just push this and let go, it means it's going to recharge on the next cycle that it's set to, to um, run on, which is in the middle of the night. I want to run it right now. So you're going to, and it could be different on your machine where it is, but just push it and hold it until the machine starts. You can hear the water running. What's happening now, we're introducing water into the brine tank to get a salt brine, plus now we have our iron out brine as well. It's not washing that away right now, that's still sitting in the brine tank. After the recharge cycle is complete at the end of it, it's going to flush all the water out and clean the salt out and the chemical that we just put in out and down the sewer. This is my water softener and that's brown because of iron right down the sewer. So you let this go through the entire recharge cycle depending on how you have your set for. That's probably going to be approximately one to two hours. Mine takes about an hour and a half. During this entire process again we don't use any water. We want the chemical and the salt brine to sit there and do its job. After the um, cycle is complete, again, that's going to be about an hour and a half in my situation, between one and two hours in your situation, depending on what you have your unit set for. We're then going to go to a cold water faucet. It can be any faucet in your house, shower, sink, whatever, and run it for a full five to ten minutes. This is just to make sure we have all the chemicals washed out down the drain and then you are complete and it's done and you should see your system running a lot more efficiently so this is just something i do twice a year i do it around the holiday season and i do it around the fourth of july where i put iron out through my water softener to make the resin beads as much iron free as i can get them so the unit will work more efficiently so I hope you got something out of the video today. I want to thank all the viewers that always come to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, I do invite you to become a subscriber. And I also hope you have a great day today. Hope you learned something. So long.